As already foretold by modern technology, Mrs. Little would give birth to a certain abnormality. The sight gave her a fright and a little unease. They weren't just twins. They were Siamese. Doctor, said she, can nothing be done? We'll try anything to save our daughter and son. Don't worry, he replied, they'll be quite fine. But we cannot disjoint the connection to the spine. You see, he continued, they may be two, but there's only one brain in this curious brew. Two heads together, but only one brain. And yet Larry and Rachel were not the same. Separate individuals, few things they shared, but divided on the middle was how they were paired. By many their parents were regarded with respect, an honor they feared risked being wrecked. Embarrassed, they offered them no discipline nor guidance, catalyst only to their twins' tragic subsidence. Left-brained Larry, he cared for science, but right-brained Rachel had a more abstract reliance. Larry read and experimented to pass the time, trying to create horrible monsters of slime. He loved analysis, measure, and deduction, but Rachel was of a more imaginative construction. She would write mostly and paint and draw and philosophize about people and things that she saw. Their differences made them a diametrical pair, doomed to a life of neglect and despair. One day they received a huge harangue from the Thompson Quadruplets, a notorious gang. They put on a most tantalizing display, shouting and pointing and running quickly away. Neither Larry nor Rachel showed grief or frustration, but swore in their hearts an ultimate retaliation. For years, books and bullies were all that they knew, as their brain got smarter and their bodies grew. But it wasn't until adolescence came along that a solution finally shined bright and strong. It was Larry who made the initial discovery whilst reading an article on a neuroanatomy. Slowly, he spoke with much hesitation. He had never been skilled at common communication. Listen, said Larry, I may be wrong, but using the whole brain could make us quite strong. According to research, there is this one way that maybe could rid us of that daily dismay. If our brain, per se, was one active unity, we could turn our thoughts into pure energy. Perhaps if we concentrated for many hours, we could even get telekinetic powers. Right, replied Rachel. She needed hardly think. Her creative mind could easily see the link. If the tragedy around us would finally cease, then perhaps you and I could get our peace. For the first time ever, she looked deep into his eyes and told him, I love you. You're the one I don't despise. For months, they worked with pure determination, with lots of practice and daily meditation. It happened one day while sitting in the park that Larry and Rachel felt the first spark. As time passed, their minds got stronger. Soon they could concentrate for longer and longer. One day they agreed that the time was right and said to each other, we'll do it tonight. But as they waited that evening for their parents to return, Larry addressed Rachel with a voice of concern. Have you considered, Rachel, if we actually have success, what will happen to us if we become parentless? It was your idea. You made no mistake. The problems that may follow is a risk we'll have to take. Not sure that he agreed, Larry was still in doubt. And as Rachel awaited his answer, her anger began to sprout. 
without even thinking her annoyance took hold and small sparks began to form silver and gold. In an act of panic, Larry tried to block his mind, but the thoughts between them were already too entwined. Rachel tried to stop it, but she was losing all control. The evil in her thoughts was devouring her soul. Soon after, the air was lit with thunder as the living room was being torn asunder. A heavy wind blew all around as Larry and Rachel were lifted off the ground. The walls started to crackle and creak. Their mutual power was reaching its peak. And then happened the unexpected. The twin couple could no longer reject it. An ending came to the grief and despair. When Larry and Rachel suddenly vanished into the air. As they left Earth, not a prayer was sighed. No one mourned and no one cried. Except for their mother, who shed a little tear. The damages to the living room were, after all, quite severe.